Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Frostbite Tribe. In the last episode, we saw the birth of our very first male baby on this entire island so far, but now our population has grown to a point where we might not have enough food to sustain them all. So we need to send our babies out, all of our extra little babies that have grown up in the meantime, to hopefully hunt down something a little bit more substantial than our bunnies and our roots. I think most likely most of the bunnies are actually going to disappear now because it has started to snow. It seems like all of the bunnies in Bunny Kingdom in particular have um, hopped off somewhere, probably back into their burrows. We have one down here by the shore though that hopefully someone is going to be able to snag, but for the most part I would like to turn our attentions over to the darkness on this side of the island. This was where we saw the Unbalanced Bear last, or we sensed him anyway. Technically none of our creatures have actually seen the Balanced Bear before so it's still very, very mysterious to them. But if we can somehow track it down and maybe see how much life it has left on it, we might be able to devise a plan to uh, maybe take it down. Of course, that's going to be a big challenge for our tribe, even with all of our claws and our ram horns and our big poison fangs, because the balance bear is probably the toughest predator on the mountainside right now, but that does mean that we'll get a ton of food if we can actually manage to take it down. So why don't we have Rare and um, her daughter Avalanche start making their way down the shore? This is pretty good anyway because um, Avalanche does have the Cracker Jaw, so if we can move her a little bit closer to the water, she might be able to spy some of these shells. I think we have another Crabbit guarding one of these shells, so why don't we move you right down here so on the next turn she'll be able to pick it up. And let's have her sniff around too and maybe listen a little bit just to make sure that the balance bear isn't around here somewhere. I believe we saw it just about um, right up here, somewhere in the darkness right on the very side of the island. So I would imagine it's either wrapping its way around toward um, Rare and her family, or maybe it's even gone up to the very top of the mountain to kind of scope out the area. It's probably quite hungry too, especially as it's getting so cold. Now Rare can go ahead and follow her daughter and this is actually her very last day too. Really? She only has one day remaining? That should probably mean that Orchid is also getting very close to the end of her life. She has four days remaining on hers, so it seems like our queens are going to have to pick out their heirs. Initially, I would have assumed that Rare would pick um, Flurry as her heir, but I think instead we're going to make um, Fang the next queen of this side of the island, because she does have those lovely poison fangs, and I think she has a pretty a decent attack strength too, of five. That's probably a little bit better than um, even Flurry, because she doesn't have the ram horns, she only has a four. So since they value strength so much, I think she's definitely going to pass the crown over to Fang and also tell her to of course protect her little brother because he is very, very important to the future of our tribe. We need to make sure that he is kept safe no matter what. Even if the balance bear comes stumbling down the mountainside, he is the top priority right now. So let's move Rare a little bit further up the mountain. Since this is her last turn anyway, let's just um, use that time to try to scope out the bunnies, of course. So I guess there are still a couple of bunnies up here in Bunny Kingdom. For that matter, we do have some roots up here too, which is very good to see. But so far, I don't see that balance bear, so it's still somewhere out in the darkness. It's actually a little bit easier to spy the roots if we maybe look from like the side of the mountain because it's very, very hard to see them when they're underneath the snow. So if we kind of like peer through the mountain a little bit, we can see there's a root way over here, which is perfect because this of course is where Snowdrop and her family has settled down. I think the best case scenario would be if um, a male baby was born in our prehistoric lines because then it would be quite a bit easier to pass those genetics in the future. But for now, I think we're going to have to focus on gathering food. So one of those roots is right over here next to Snowdrop. Let's move her over to this side so she can dig it up for her babies. And um, since we don't have any extra nests available, we'll wait to breed her again until the next turn. Let's have somebody come up here to um, hopefully gather up some of those twig bushes though. Who could possibly do that job? We might need to um, swap somebody out for copper. He's the only one with the uh, running leg right now who could possibly gather up those twig bushes, so you scoot over this way. And then let's actually have Orchid, our queen, make her way up to the top of this throne so she can protect all of her grandbabies. Technically, I don't think Koanaisa's babies are even in her family, but she would still consider them family nonetheless. She's actually teaching Corella how to become a proper warrior with both of her claws, so hopefully she'll be able to take up her position after she does pass away. Now Copper can come down here too 
too, since he is quite the hardy individual with his medium tail and his big body. We don't have to worry about him freezing if he stays out um, a little bit further away from his family. Snowdrop, on the other hand, is going to have to keep herself warm, so why don't you scoot back over here since we don't have any more tasty roots in the area. Then, of course, we want um, Corella to do the same because she's actually very, very um, weak to the cold. So she can scoot right over this way to um, keep a closer eye out on the shores, I think. We do want somebody to get down there to hopefully take care of all of these crabbits. Oh, great. We have another crabbit invasion on our hands, but at least that's extra food for us. It would be great if we could um, maybe scoot Orchid down there to maybe take a swipe at one of these crabbits, but I am a little bit worried about the babies. I mean, I guess some Koanais, in all honesty, could watch after them instead. So she can scoot down here just for the extra food, and then we'll sit Koanais on the throne now. So they're kind of playing musical thrones at the moment, but with food on their minds, they are not willing to pass up any little crabbits that come their way. Now we still have the bunny situation over here. How close can you guys get? Very, very close. Okay, so somebody could actually chase that bunny down. I guess we could have Mulberry do that since she's not going to be able to make a nest on this turn anyway. So go ahead and chase the bunny down for us for that extra food. There we go. So we can pick that up on the next turn. And then we definitely want to make sure that Anala at least um, breeds with Kiro because he is going to pass away. Their fertility is so low though that we might actually miss our chance. Look at all of those failed attempts. And we're on our very last little bit of energy too. Is this going to work? Oh no, they're not going to be able to have another baby. So we only have little Fawn in this family right now with the Amygdaloceros horns in her genetics. She also has the blindness in there thanks to her father. She has the frog feet of her mother. She is a quite the mixed up little baby, even with the crippled paw that he has. But her silver lining is that she has um, the extra immunity gene, immunity gene D, so it should be a little bit easier to pair her up with any potential of uh, future male babies. Hopefully, we desperately need some more male babies to be born on this island. We can't put all of the pressure on poor little Nip after all, just in case anything does happen to him. There is always a possibility that um, he might get injured in the future, so we need to make sure we have a backup plan. It looks like Flurry has a couple little twigs that she can pick up though. I do want her to come down here to hopefully help out her um, her cousin, I believe, Snowdrop. They were always very close and now that Flurry has just watched one of her um, closest pack mates wither away in the snow, I think she would want to come back and make sure she's safe. So Flurry will stay in the area and hopefully scoop up any of uh, those pesky bunnies that hop in her direction. And I think that's um, about all of the safe moves that we can make for this side of the island. So let's go back over here and make sure that um, Nip is safe, of course. We need Need to make sure that he has somebody right by him because these birds are still hovering in the skies. That would be a disaster if our one male baby got him taken away by the birds. Now maybe we could find some shells for um, a Nasi to pick up? It looks like she just has some leeches down here by the water, so we don't want her to get too close. But we'll have her sit there in case um, any little shells decide to spawn in the meantime. And then maybe we could actually bring um, Pine a little bit closer just to keep her safe, just in case. Just in case that leech gets um, a little bit feisty and decides to attach itself to a Nasi in the process. We'll leave um, Huckleberry in the area, of course. Maybe he could scoot down here and then back on top of the throne just to light up more of this area for us. Fang is not going to wander too far away because, of course, she has been given the task of keeping her little brother safe. But let's move her over here just so she can pick up some of these twig bushes on the next turn. And I think, again, that is just about all of the safe turns that we can make. So let's uh, just sniff around one last time to see where everything is right now. I think I do see a bunny way back here in Bunny Kingdom. Yeah, so maybe Flurry is going to be able to grab that one. And we even have one way up here, too, at the very tippity top. Still no sign of that balance bear, though. And that is definitely what we're looking for right now. So I guess um, let's go ahead and skip the turn. We don't have anyone giving birth on this turn, so we don't have to worry about the mutation menu. Let's just make sure that nothing dangerous comes out, aside from the snow, of course. Oh my gosh. This is also the very first time that we have seen um, such a storm on the mountainside, on this mountain at least. Somewhere with uh, no grasslands for us to hide in, so it's going to be very, very hard, as you can see, for us to move around in the snow as it continues to pile up. But we do have some food to gather, thankfully. So let's make sure that a mulberry gathers up this little bunny that she caught. And let's see if we can maybe scoot our way up the mountain a little bit more to um, grab those other bunnies. It does look like we have some more tasty roots down here to dig up too, so that's good. Some a little emergency food just in case. But where did that bunny go? Right up here, right where um, we have a little bit of an indent in the snow. 
So can you chase the bunny for us? I think you actually can. There you go, Flurry. You managed to grab one and you get a little bit of a rest inside this hot spring too. Now let's bring Corella down here so Orchid can uh, teach her hopefully how to attack these crabbits. If we put Orchid over here, she should be in the right location. There we go. She can slap it once from behind and that was enough, really? Well, you might as well gather it up then, Corella. You might as well gather your very first little batch of food for us so we have a little bit more to eat as a snow piles down. Now, Copper, go ahead and pick up all of these twig bushes, and then I think he should probably move back to him, have some more babies. If he can maneuver his way around all of his children already. I think it's also quite likely that Orchid is going to pass her crown over to her baby Snowdrop, mostly for the digging trunk. Even though it doesn't give her any extra strength, it has served them well in the food department, so she has definitely contributed a lot to their tribe. Let's have them breed again, though, so we'll have uh, two babies born on this turn and two more potential uh, males, hopefully. Hopefully, we need some more males in this tribe. We could have um, Mulberry come over here and use this nest now. And that way everyone will be kept warm over here too because of course Anala does not have the highest cold resistance either. She does have the digging paw though, so again, we'll have to uh, make sure that we're keeping an eye out for those tasty roots. It looks like poor little Huckleberry is getting cold now too, especially since his mate has just passed away way up at the top of the mountain by all of that snow. So he's probably feeling quite sad right now. Let's have him settle inside the hot spring just to warm himself up. And then I suppose we should probably have Nip um, travel a little bit closer to Fang, just so he's kept safe by him, his sister. We don't want them getting too far apart, but we also want them to keep trying to seek out that balance bear. And in fact, we might want you guys to follow all of your siblings around the mountain just so they have some backup. Let's have Anasi wrap her way around the shores with them, her sister, so they can try to find those shells too. That's going to be very, very important. And we also want to make sure that Fang is getting her special gems too. I mean, she almost has them already. We'll change this one to green, and then um, the last gem that she gets will change over to blue so that she can be a proper queen as well. And thankfully, we do have some shells over on this side of the island, so hopefully you can snag that up for us on the next turn too, Anasi. Meanwhile, Avalanche is still trying to find the balance fair so she'll move her way around all of these uh, jungle ports and we'll sniff around a little bit to see if it's here not yet but i mean on the plus side since it's taking us so long to find this balance bear again it might actually be i'm um, quite old by the time we do run into it so it might be a little bit easier for us to take down potentially if we uh, play our cards right now before we skip the day again let's make sure the mutation menu is set up for these babies because of course we don't want to alter the chances of the um, hammer tail getting passed along in the inactive traits by having that medium tail in here instead. So we still have the hind legs in here from um, Anala's babies, I believe. Let's make sure we put the ram horns in here, and then we'll keep the big body too because that's very, very important for these babies. Unfortunately, their uh, mothers only have the normal body, the medium body, so that's why they're a little bit less cold resistant than um, some of our other creatures, and we need them to be hardy, especially if we're going to keep the hammer tail in the future. So let's zoom out again and let's make sure that that balance bear is nowhere to be found. Um, so far so good I think. I don't see it scooting out at any of our creatures, but this snow is crazy. I mean, we are like completely buried here. Look at you poor little guys. Maybe we should have waited to move you off until you were fully grown because you guys look like you're going to get completely lost in the snow. Let's see what our brand new little babies look like though. Oh my gosh, the double clawed babies again. Look at you guys, you are adorable. And thankfully I'm a Rala here. I do like her name as well. I think I might keep that. Rala has the a big body and the medium tail. So she should be able to wander the mountainside without worrying about freezing. And then we have you way back here, little Sorella. She wasn't quite as lucky because she only has the medium body just like her mother, but at least she does have one of those big claws so she should be able to keep herself safe. And yet again, neither of them are males. Yet again, Anime refuses to give us strong babies who are not females, so this is quite interesting. It does really seem like Nip is going to be the final male of the island. He is going to be our one hope to continue all of our lines. But let's um, name this little baby back here Nettle, and then let's see if we can find any more food because we have officially dipped below 100 pieces in our stores, which means if they can't find any food to sustain them, we are going to have to start banishing some of our tribe mates. And we have a crab at way out here that we could possibly get if we could keep our babies warm enough. 
We could have Orchid move a little bit closer into the water, maybe right over here. And then Corella and Ruby should be able to keep warm by staying right next to her side. Now maybe Copper could come down here instead and help her out with the Crabbit. He's almost out of life too, oh geez. We don't have much longer to go before he's going to end up passing away on top of his throne. So since we can't use the nest right now, let's have him move down here just to collect some more food. And I think we definitely want to have maybe a snowdrop sit up here instead just to keep all these babies warm. Now we'll see if you guys can do a little bit of damage on the crabbit. Oh, there we go. These crabbits must have been in the water for a very, very long time because so far they've been pretty easy to take out. Now that brings us just barely over 100 pieces of food again, but once we pass the day, it's going to be right back down to where it was before. It is so hard to see the roots through all of the snow too, and I think we're at the point where we do actually have to shovel it out before we can even move. So we're going to have to start making our pathways all across the mountainside again. Um, Flurry, at least you can pick up your rabbit meat and then try to start making your way down the mountain. It is going to take her so long. It is a very, very good thing that she's hardy enough to um, keep herself warm, otherwise she would be in a little bit of trouble right now. Now let's move Mulberry finally onto this nest so she can have her baby. And that means that we'll have um, one more baby with one of those special immunity genes too. Now let's have a pine who is fully grown. We'll give her her final gem. Scoot over in this direction to pick up this lovely shell down here. Hopefully we can find some more too. So far there have been, oh there we go, another crabbit. And it's guarding a shell. Yeah, so far the shells have been pretty plentiful for us. So I am very, very glad that we have so many cracker jawed creatures. Quite a few of these um, babies have the uh, nimble fingers too. Which aren't as helpful just because we don't have any berry bushes to pick from, but at least it's a way to gather the shells. Let's have you guys move your way down here toward your family because we don't want you getting lost. And then if it's possible, could we move a Huckleberry after his family too? I mean, he's going to have to shovel out all of the snow before he can even get around, and unfortunately that one actually had a rock in it too. So he's not going to be able to move there. Let's just have him shovel out the snow for now. We'll make him um, a little bit of a pathway so he'll hopefully be able to join up with his family on the next turn. If he's not completely stranded, then we might actually be able to find him um, another possible mate. Hopefully he has four days left on him, so if he can get out of there in time, maybe he could still have a couple more babies. I mean, we just have so few males on this island at this point that we don't want to waste his potential if we can help it. It is definitely much easier to move when we're on the shore, though. So let's have Avalanche keep trying to find that balance bear. I'm starting to think that it is not on the shore. It's probably somewhere at the very top of the mountain. That's all I can guess. Of course, Flurry's up here, and she has an exactly a sense to either. So I wonder where it ran off to. If we could only find it, like hopefully it didn't pass away and leave all of its meat lying around somewhere on the mountainside. Now you guys, I guess I'm just shovel out your snow since Copper is a little bit busy at the moment. This nest is going to have to be repaired, but thankfully we do have just enough nesting material to do so. All of the babies are safe enough that we could possibly try to find some roots too if we could only see them in all of the snow. I mean, I guess, Koei and Ais, you could come out this way and try to shovel out a little bit more for your family. And then we could do the same with um, Amethyst since she does have a high enough cold resistance that she won't have to worry about freezing either. So let's have her shovel out all of that snow around the nest just so they can move a little bit more freely and just so Flurry can make it back too. She could actually scoot her way through all of these hot springs and make it over to um, their pathways as long as it doesn't get buried once we pass the day here. The only other thing we need to do is make sure that we place some sort of um, paw in the mutation menu to hopefully override Kiro's no paw. So let's plop down the running leg because that one is typically a little bit easier for us to pass over the claw or the nimble fingers. And then let's zoom way, way out here and try to figure out where on earth that balance bear is. Thankfully, the snow did stop. That is a good sign, so we should be able to um, hopefully make our way around the island a little bit more easily. And a look at that, little Fang, you have grown your final gem, so you can officially take on the role of our alpha. And just in time too, because it does seem like we are going to have to start banishing some of our creatures. We only have 90 pieces of food now and 20 pack mates to feed. But, oh my gosh, is this finally another male? 
It actually is, and he does not have the no paw. How lucky is that? He has the ram horns, the claw. He doesn't have the big body, but he's carrying the digging trunk. Oh my gosh, that is perfect. If we could possibly breed him with one of us snowdrops babies, if one of them hopefully, oh no, they have the same immunity genes. Again, we have the F immunity in their genes, both of them. So we're going to have to um, breed snowdrop a little bit more, I think. That is probably one of the uh, top priorities to make sure that we can pass that digging trunk onto their babies. That way we won't lose it once she does pass away and we can keep digging up all of those tasty roots. So again, all is not lost. We have yet another baby to keep very, very safe in our nests. So let's do a little bit of investigating again. Oh, there we go. There it is. The balance bear has stumbled its way down the shore. So let's take a sneaky little peek at this guy. Let's move right here so we're behind the hot springs, just barely hiding from this massive bear. Is he not the cutest thing though? He is absolutely adorable and he blends in very, very well with his snowy environment. But let's see, he has a two in attack strength and a two in defense. So just like the um, apes, I believe, that means that it's going to take off two points of damage every single time we take a swing at this guy. We are pretty lucky though that he only does um, two in attack himself because that means with our big body that we should only take one point of damage a piece. So it might not actually be too out of the question for us to um, take this balance bear down as long as we're very, very careful about it. I mean, it does have 72 days left on its lifespan. That is quite long, so not as many days have uh, passed as I was hoping. What might help us out is if we uh, keep track of these bears though, just in case another one spawns in the meantime. So why don't we actually name this one? We'll name her uh, Freckles to go along with all of those adorable little spots on her back. Giving her a less menacing name might just help our tribe get the confidence they need to take her down too. But I think we might want to move Avalanche away from the spare for now. We'll actually move her right down here to pick up the shell. She is close enough that she might still get hit, but honestly, if the balance bear decides to go after her, then we could have her entire family swoop in right behind her. And we have some twig bush over here. Oh, I thought that was something we could gather up for food, but it looks like it's just a twig bush. I think instead of going after that, we do want um, our family to wrap around the side to get toward the spare as soon as possible. We do need Pine to come down here to pick up the shell for us, but otherwise she's going to be right behind her little brother. And likewise, Fang, you are going to have to catch up with him too because you are trying to keep him safe. It is unfortunate because he seems as if he's a very, very adventurous soul, so you have quite a bit of work ahead of you. Now let's see if we can finally help their father out of his hot spring too. Oh my gosh, Huckleberry, I am so sorry. We have stranded you out in the middle of nowhere. This is basically his only a chance too. He can only really use this path. There's just way too much snow on the other side of the island to um, risk going this way instead. And I wonder if we have like a little bunny right here? I wonder what that could possibly be because there's just one tile, one lone tile of uh, no snow there, so there must be something in the area. Let's have you shovel away some of the snow again though. Make your way a little bit closer to these hot springs because you are probably going to need to warm up after on um, this turn. It actually might be easier to go crab it hunting now that these babies are grown and it's Orchid's final turn too. Oh no, she's also going to pass away, so let's use her last few turns to um, gather up some more of these crabbits. Orchid can scoot right over here behind this one, and she even uh, revealed another shell over here for somebody to gather up. Though most of these creatures are without the cracker jaws since some copper's big derp snout has actually taken over. I think that's because, well, Snowdrop's babies aren't going to be able to inherit the digging trunk since you do need two of those traits. And it just has kind of overridden um, Koenaise's short snout instead. So everyone over here is going to have that derp snout. It's adorable, but it's not really going to help us in the long run because we need something that's going to give us more food. But let's have Ruby scoot her way over here to hopefully slap this guy from behind. There we go. And then Orchid can finish the job with her double claws and pick up all of that lovely meat. Now, Corella is probably going to want to join them because they are going to get quite cold without her. And then it'll be Copper's turn to have some of his very final babies before he ends up passing away as well. So let's scoot him up here toward all of his mates. We want him to settle himself down right on top of the stump again so that we can breed with them, both of them, hopefully. Let's breed with um, Snowdrop first because she is very, very important with that digging trunk, especially now that we have this little baby over here inside our nest. 
Actually, I do believe we need to name him still. I got so excited over the fact that he was just a male that I completely forgot to name him. So his family was typically named after berries. So I think we'll name him a Goji, Little Goji Berry. And let's see if we can um, hopefully find some more food for you guys to dig up too. I mean, we have that bear in our midst now. It's right over in this direction. So if it does decide to turn around and lumber the other way, you guys might be in a little bit of trouble. And yet I do spy a tasty root right over here under the snow. So let's make sure we dig that up. We could have Fawn come over here and um, pick up some of the snow for her mother so that she can come this way and dig up the root for us. There we go. We could even make a little bit more of a pathway over here just so we can hopefully uh, escape if there are any bear situations. Let's also make sure that Mulberry scoots up here not only to protect her baby, but also to keep everyone in her family warm. I think at this point she probably would consider everyone in this tiny group her family, even though they are not technically related. So let's see, Flurry, um, you're actually getting cold? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think that she could get cold because she had um, the three in cold resistance, but it must be getting cold enough now that the temperature is still continuing to drop that she is actually starting to feel that strain. Luckily, she has plenty of hot springs in the area, so let's move you way down here and then you can kind of shovel out the snow from the safety of your hot springs so we won't have to worry about her too much. But that means that Amethyst might actually have a little bit more trouble than we were um, expecting. And likewise, we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this entire family over here. Even though they have all of the right genetics, they might actually have a little bit of trouble if they don't huddle together. So for the final babies of this episode, let's make sure that we swap out the um, running leg for that big body, of course, that this family so needs. And then we'll zoom out way over here to see exactly where this uh, balance bear is going to go. Is it going to go after you? Oh yes, it definitely is. Thankfully, Avalanche did not get attacked. And look at this! Anime may finally be giving us a little bit of good luck because we have yet another male in the nest. And he has a digging trunk again. I mean, honestly, it would have been a little bit better if this baby was a female because then we would definitely be able to breed her with a little goji. But instead, we have an adorable male right in the nest with a digging trunk again, so hopefully we can find somebody for him to breed with too. He has immunities A and K, so we'll have to take a look and see which ones would be um, suited to him. But in the next episode, I think the main focus is going to be trying to um, get rid of freckles here. Because if we can take this bear down, we might be able to um, gather up just enough food to keep everyone sustained for a couple more days. As it is, I think we're going to have to um, have our alphas of the pack, Snowdrop and Fang, decide who is um, most likely to stay in the tribe and who should possibly leave. Because we just don't have enough sources of food at the moment to keep everyone happy and fed and healthy and we are going to risk starvation if we're not careful. So a lot of big decisions to make in the next episode, but for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!